Danny coming off the win last weekend. What's the mood been like around the camp? Yeah, mood's been good. It's been uh, it's been a it's been a good week. It's been uh, another good intense week of training. Obviously, with the with the weather getting hotter and hotter here, we you know we're in that period right now where we you know where we're we're adapting to the heat and we're we're pushing hard through it. Um, but yeah, the mood in the group has been been good. Obviously, that's normal when you when you win a game. And um, you know, I think obviously the way in which we won the game last weekend just sometimes maybe heightens that a little bit as well, the feeling coming off the game. So everybody's very pleased and uh, you know happy with with what we ended up achieving on Saturday. But um, you know, as I said after the game, not <laughs> that that's satisfaction for last weekend, but not satisfied as we move forward. So we work again. You mentioned adapting to the heat. What kind of changes do you make to training then over the summer to, to help with that? Yeah, I mean, there's honestly in one in one way there's there's no getting around it. It's it's hot now for the next three or four months, and we we have to work in that heat. And so you know we adjust training time to to a little bit earlier. We'll uh, we'll, we'll continue to do that. But um, yeah, just the way we structure the the sessions, we obviously make sure there's plenty of of uh, hydration breaks, and we try to keep the sessions moving on track uh, nice and quickly. But um, yeah, again, it's it's two sided. We we of course have to uh, you know adjust accordingly and appropriately, but uh, at the same time. We also have to adapt to, to playing and training in this weather that's going to be with us for, for the next few months. When you're training, when you're changing sessions around like that and making it shorter, does that kind of change the direction of how you're teaching movements and sequences and stuff like that? Not especially, no. Um, it's not always that we're, that we're making training shorter. Sometimes it's not shorter. It's just we make sure that, you know, we do all the preparation properly. And like I said, we, we maybe give a little bit more uh, breaks and, and uh, you know time to, to pause and to drink and have a few more tents out there for shaded areas those types of things it's not not always a shorter session but um, no, it doesn't it doesn't honestly really change how we work it just means on on certain days though it is important that we that we move swiftly from exercise to exercise and we, we keep the session on track and, and moving so on occasion it does move a little bit more quickly um, but in general it doesn't really change how we teach and what we teach at the moment and with Orange County having the chance to let it digest a little bit, I think you said after the game, you know, games are always going to have those ebbs and flows to it, especially you saw that with the 15 minutes in the second half. How do you as a staff kind of, you know, make sure that happens less frequently and avoid issues like that where you come out of the second half and, you know, Orange County or another the opposition or, you know, the, the progressive team? Yeah, well, again, I mean, in watching the game back, um, I, don't know if, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to rewatch the game, but... First 10 minutes to the second half, I thought we were good. Um, and Orange County's couple of chances came from, honestly, a couple of mistakes that we made. Um, but I actually wasn't wasn't dissatisfied with how we came out in the second half of the first 10 minutes because I actually felt we had two or three good moments as well. Absolutely take your point that um, the OC had a couple of moments. Um, but like I say, those are those are honestly more from, I, th I felt, individual mistakes uh, that will obviously we'll, we'll look to, 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 of course, tighten those up. Um, I felt their main spell, honestly, was actually more between maybe the 56th and, and 70th minute, something like that. So, it, you know, 10 minutes into the second half, then I felt the game just just opened up a little bit too much for, um, you know, for how we would have would have liked it to have been in that uh, phase. So, for that particular spell of the game, absolutely, you know, the point that you make, we, you know, it's a it's a mental piece. It's also a, a, a physical and tactical piece, um, but certainly, I think it starts with the mentality of things in. You know, we expect that when we play good teams, they will have a spell in the game. And in, and, and in those spells, we have to stay mentally connected to, to things and, and at times be OK to continue to control the game if we can, even if that is without the ball for a few minutes. And we we have to absorb a few minutes of pressure, perhaps. And, and that, that's also normal. Um, and then we get out of that pressure as quickly as we can. That's that's probably the factor for me that that we've worked on this week and that I would look to, to, to continue to improve on moving forward. Not that we get into spells of pressure because that is on occasion unavoidable and very normal. It's how we then move ourselves back out of that and how we then re reestablish some momentum on the front foot to, to change the game, which I felt we actually did again. Um, and at the time the red card happened, I felt that we had shifted some of that momentum back in our favor. And then with that sequence towards the end, obviously, can you describe kind of what you and the staff were going through with some of the attacking changes you made as the game progressed, you made them earlier than it seemed like you usually would and mm -hmm. you tried to win some of that momentum back in yeah. around the 70th minute. And yeah. Obviously you go down a man, but right away Azakar was a, with a great touch, a great ball from Mo and then you get the goal. Yeah, yeah I mean look, in some of the changes, like I say, it's, it's a momentum thing and it's just, it's a couple of tactical choices as well where you have players with different strengths and different traits. And so, you know, the first couple of, uh, First couple of changes with uh, with with Fede coming on is obviously a different type of profile as a ten to 
to Panos, and um, you know that this that's, that maybe gives you something slightly different just to just to secure possession of the ball a little bit. You know, that is that is an intelligent player at finding those gaps. Yeah, and then as as players come into the game from from that point, and Azakar coming on late in the game, and I you know I I, I spoke to him afterwards, and um, you know gave gave him his well deserved credit after the game to come on with. 10 or 12 minutes left in a game and um, and affect it immediately and to you know with 10 men especially um, I was very very pleased with him and he's an excellent pro as well and um, you know I, I, I watch him train day in day out and um, you know I'm impressed with him as a professional and, I, and it doesn't doesn't surprise me that he has the needed mentality to come into a game like that and then and then affect it and we know he has quality um, and I think he showed that in that moment obviously you've mentioned a few times there with the 10 men um, the red card moving a notable incident in there. Now that you've had the chance to, to chat with people about what happened there, you know, yeah. what, what are your views on the whole circumstances around that? Um, it's a it's a situation that obviously you know players have to learn from. Um, I think uh, Rito is is has acknowledged his mistake, um, got caught up in the emotion of of that moment and felt he should have maybe had more out of a out of a decision, which which I you know perhaps agree with honestly. However. That's not an excuse to uh, to lose emotional control, and he he recognises that. We know that as a, uh, as a as a group, and so again, it's another thing that we we take and we learn from. And um, you know, he uh, I hope he he takes that with him as well, and he learns from that because he you know he adds he adds very good energy and emotion into a game, but it has to stay obviously within uh, within appropriate limits so that it doesn't boil over to that point. Looking ahead now to this weekend in El Paso, what kind of changes have you seen in them since, since Wilma came in? Um, listen, I, I think in watching them, and we watched back through them earlier in the season as well, they're a squad of good players that have, you know, that have had good players throughout the season and although maybe didn't get some some results, have still played well. I think with the with the change of coach, with Wilma coming in, it, it's quite normal. Obviously, we see that very regularly, that that has a, a change in, in energy maybe and, and players then, you know, it changes everybody's circumstance a little bit from a from a playing point of view where you know players who maybe have been less involved feel they have an opportunity players who have been more more involved maybe feel that they have to re-establish and and show again that they uh, deserve to be in the team and it's a normal thing that that produces some maybe some heightened competition within the group and obviously like i say an injection of energy uh, and wilma's a good experienced coach i've known wilma for for many years um you know coached his son actually as well at the rapids so so know the family relatively well and um, you know Wilma has uh, has a good experience and, and I'm sure has added a good injection of, of energy into that group from from the coaching style but uh, this is a, a normal thing and since since he's since he's come into the club they've um, you know they've had had some good results and they've had I think a, you know an injection of effectiveness that that sort of layers on top of what we know was already a good squad of, uh, of quality players so you know it's, it's not a really a surprise to see it but um, you know credit to them for the way that they've reacted to that uh, change in, in, in coaching position over the last few games. Uh, how do you, when you watch the film, and you mentioned you go you know, a little bit further back to the prior coaching staff with Brian, are you looking at all sort of different types of profiles, especially with a lot of their players you know, playing with El Salvador for the event? Are you looking at different depth and who can you possibly? Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah, listen, I mean, we're aware that obviously we're in an international uh, window right now with games going on that um, potentially that means players may or may not be back involved with the squad and we'll um you know we'll for sure like everybody would do we'll, we'll keep an eye on keep an eye on that but uh, yes we prepare for the different profiles that could potentially be involved with that game and different different players who may or may not be available for selection and we we sort of prepare broadly for all of it and then once we get the more specific information we then sort of hone in a little bit on you know reminders of what we might expect to see from different players playing in, uh, in in those positions. So yeah, we, we kind of prepare across the board for it. And then once we know, we know, and we and we get on with it. Where are we at with um, fitness update this week in terms of the club as a whole? Club as a whole is in a, again, in a very good, healthy position from a, from an injury perspective, um, pretty much across the board fitness. And, um, you know, like, like I spoke about after the game, Remy's been back involved with training this week and we'll assess kind of tomorrow where his involvement level for Saturday might be, but he has been back in training this week. Um, so, you know, pretty pretty fit group overall and normal normal knocks and um, nothing more than that. Yep. What do you think the biggest difference is between the start of the year when you had lost three out of the first four as to now? Um, I mean, look, some, some 
some consistency in in playing together and some time you know putting pieces in place and and then a bit of a mentality that um you know it, it, which is all part of it honestly that that sort of development as a team is is of course on the field and tactically how players play together and how we want to perform as a team but also that that bit of mentality that says try to be effective always at the end of, of that and you know i think you know relatively speaking people would would i think see that we're a team who have the the ability to play some some good football um and then we need to make sure that we continue the the focus and the emphasis on being effective at the end of that and you know it, again when i look back at this last weekend we've gone down to 10 men twice this year and we've been able to to score goals away in Tulsa and then at home this weekend to to claim points from uh, from the game so this is a this is a good mentality that the team show this is a good togetherness and spirit and and that sort of you know that that almost never beaten mentality that we that we we do speak about as a as a group and and they've shown that so there's there's a lot of credit to be given to that but um that's something also that takes some time and some games together to develop and um and, and almost prove to yourself that that remains within you and, and when we do then see these moments of adversity these are all you know like i say if you've proved it to yourself before you have good confidence that you can repeat it again knowing that obviously you've struggled at times to string wins together this season how important is it to to build on last week's win with three points yeah it? very important and again we've we've mentioned this previously and we've spoken about this again this week that every time we get three points the following game can really compound that and make it a you know make last week's three points even better um you know and we we go in into the game this weekend with a target of claiming seven points out of these last three games in the, in the league that we've played and so absolutely yes i mean you know, to be consistent team that, that get wins is absolutely the next sort of piece of evolution, I think, for this team. So, you know, not just to not just to be a team that is ever satisfied. And we're not, you know, we're not satisfied when we don't put back to back wins together. Don't get me wrong here, but this is this is something that um, is a big focus again here now. And the energy that it took last week in the end to win a game will be required again. This is, you know, again, I've, I've never been same as I said, honestly, about Vegas a couple of weeks ago. I don't think I've ever been away to El Paso, and it's been a comfortable time ever with any team that I've that I've coached for. Um, so it's going to be a you know, another hot place, probably dry conditions, and again a team that are on a, a good run of form more recently, and um, it will be a tough game. And so everything that we had to put into the game last weekend to achieve three points, we, we have to do it again this week. And you know that's where as as players and as coaches, energy levels going into games, and this is mental as well as physical we're going to need every ounce of it and we're going to need everybody's energy as well to, to, to go and get three points. With the Euros starting tomorrow then, what stage are England going to bottle it at this year? <laughs> okay. All right, let me think. Let me consider this answer a little bit. I have, I have full confidence in, uh, in England to actually do very well this year. I think, I, I think this is a great squad of players that they've got and I think it's a, this is a team that I hope has evolved over the last couple of tournaments and I actually think going into this tournament they should rightly be considered one of the the strongest teams going into the into the competition so whilst I uh, whilst I understand the uh, the question that you're trying to poke me on here I actually think they're going to do very well so I'll, I'll leave it at that who do you think is going to win it uh, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go I'm going to back back the the home country I'll say England